Shalom, everybody. We're here at the English Channel of Machon Meir. I'm Ari Abramowitz here with Rabbi David Aaron. The world looks different, and uh, and refining this prism. And I'm realizing, you know, to touch on a, pr a prior question, but it really leads into this. Uh, there are things that I feel like are impediments in my life that are preventing me from having these clarities. For me, one of them is my what I feel like is honestly an addiction to my iPhone. I feel often like my iPhone owns me, I don't own my iPhone, that if an alien were to look down at me, it would be like, that machine is controlling that man. Uh, I feel fortunate because I know people that are addicted to much worse things than that. Right. Alcohol and drugs and behavioral patterns. and How, how, does, how does Judaism, Torah Judaism, contend with addiction? How, how do we relate to it? How can we go about fixing it? How can we help others with it? Right. Addiction is the absolute antithesis of Judaism. You know, in so many ways you could say that Judaism came to free men of addiction because addiction is slavery. You know, the Jewish people, you know, the whole story of the Jewish people getting out of Egypt wasn't just a story. It was a breakthrough for the world because the very idea of freedom didn't exist in the world until that time. You know, we think that's really strange. Of course, freedom, we all know freedom. So, like, you think that everybody knows freedom. That's not true. That's not true. At one time in history, or a long time in history, there wasn't this idea that, there, that freedom is even possible, that freedom is even right or good, right? There are those that were born slaves and there are those who were born masters and don't mess with the constellations and don't mess with astrology. The getting out of Egypt wasn't just the birth of Jewish people, it was literally the birth of the idea of freedom. And, and Judaism is about freedom. Now, what is freedom? Freedom doesn't mean I can do whatever I feel like doing, because that might mean that you're a slave to your, 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 your lowest you know, urges. But freedom, again, is align my, aligning myself with my higher self, which is God. That I'm freely choosing to want what God wants, because what God wants is what I, in my deepest, deepest, deepest depth, want. Okay? And so, really, it's all about freedom. And any form of compromise of freedom is anti-Jewish vision for the world. And therefore, any kind of addiction. The great thing about Judaism is one of the most powerful transformational um, practices in Judaism is Shabbat. Because Shabbat, I'm sure you're not using your phone. So you see that you're not so addicted, right? Because you can let go. And that's the beginning. That at least one day a week, and that's not a small amount of time, one day a week, I let go, I let God, right? And I get back connected to my freedom, right? And that my phone doesn't own me, right? If I can't let go of my phone, then I don't have a phone, the phone has me. But for one day I can let go of my phone, then I got my life back. I got my soul back. I got my connection to God back. That's true. On Shabbat, I don't even have a momentary impulse to want to have the phone. I feel liberated from it. Right. And I think the question is, how can that then be, that energy be brought into the rest of well, the week? Well, actually, you know, at the end of Shabbat, there's a ceremony we do called Havdalah, which is distinction. We distinguish between the holiness of Shabbat and the, so to speak, not yet holiness of the week. And we look at our fingers, uh, you know, in the light of this candle, this Havdalah candle. And one idea is that we're meant to draw the light of Shabbat and try to bring more of that perception into our week. And therefore you have to bring Shabbat into the week, you know? But the way to do that is you take this clump of time, a whole day, to really live that freedom and let go. During the week, are you taking the energy from the last Shabbat into that week, or are you pulling it from the next Shabbat into that week? It's actually both. It's really both. Shabbat is really the bookends of our life, and we're like between it, and we understand that we're going from Shabbat and we're going toward Shabbat and we need to bring more and more of the Shabbat freedom into you know, our week. Um, could you elaborate a little bit more on Shabbat itself? When we're talking about Shabbat, uh, many people look at it and uh, it seems thou shalt not this, thou shalt not that. And it's a, it's a, in truth you're saying it's a liberation from the things that don't control us. Is there something more and deeper, a different facet or understanding to Shabbat that we could bring? Well, you know, again, we're, we're the, the sad thing for people is there's so many misconceptions about our tradition. 
And I knew I grew up thinking Shabbat is just a day where you can't do this and you can't do that. And so what can you do? Nothing, you know. And who would want to do that? Uh, what people understand is what you can't do on Shabbat is creating a space for what you can do. And what can you do on Shabbat? You can make relationships holy. Because right? during the week we're running and we're accomplishing and we've got deadlines, which I think is a very sad term itself, is we're running to a deadline. And we're, we're forgetting where life is happening, which is in our relationships. I know for myself that if I didn't have Shabbat, I don't know what that would do to my marriage or what that would do to my family life because, you know, I've got lots of things that I want to accomplish in the world, but sometimes you're so in a hurry to get to the top of the mountain, you forgot that it was about the joy of climbing and especially with who you're climbing it with. And therefore, you know, all of that is creating this sacred space for relationship with yourself, with your family, with your friends, with God. Thank you so much, Rabbi Aaron. Thank you.